When President Richard Nixon took the United States dollar off the gold standard in 1971, it was the beginning of the end for the dollar's value. But there's a movement brewing in America today that seeks to restore the gold-backed dollar. Only, how do we get from a currency backed by the words of bureaucrats to a currency backed by gold? How do we get from here to there? Here with a map to guide us is Lou Lehrman, chairman of the Lehrman Institute and author of The True Gold Standard, How to Get From Here to There. Lou, it's a pleasure, as always, welcome here. Great to just see just you give us the, the, the short, one-minute version of why we should have a gold-backed dollar, why what's in your pocket and mine and everybody watching us now is utterly worthless. Well, the result of a gold-backed uh, dollar is the end of inflation. It's the stabilization of the purchasing power of the dollar over the long run. America was founded with a gold-backed dollar. Right. The price level was stable for over 100 years, and we had the most rapid economic growth in American history, a century of 4% real growth in full employment. You, you wrote a piece in the Wall Street Journal not too long ago describing some, describing some of the drama around uh, Richard Nixon's decision in 1971 to sign an executive order closing the gold window, basically saying to the Treasury, if Lou Lehrman shows up with a, with a gold certificate, don't give him his gold. But if you could have whispered something in Richard Nixon's ear before a pen hit paper on that executive order, what would you have said to him? Uh, I, I would have recommended that he, uh, he ignore the advice of all the so-called conservative economists that surrounded him. Don't forget, there was Arthur Burns, there was uh, Governor Connolly, there right. was Herbert Stein. Uh, there were so many uh, uh, well-known, well-respected Conservative, but not necessarily free market. Uh, well, I would say conservative in quotes, because these are the same men who advocated the first peacetime wage and price controls in American history right. under a so-called Republican president who was for the free market. Okay, so you have a few seconds to whisper in his ear. So He's say, about to yeah, sign the executive order. What do you, aside from grabbing the pen out of his hand, what do you say? Don't do that. Why not? Because you are developing a recipe for rapid inflation and ultimately unemployment and a decline of American prosperity. And, of course, the history of the past 40 years is that you were exactly correct. Unemployment, recession, inflation. Why doesn't the Federal Reserve count food and fuel when they measure inflation? What is more needed by the American public every day than food and fuel? Well, the academic economists, the government economists, have this conceit that somehow food and fuel move independently of any economic or any financial or monetary causes and thus you ignore that and you eliminate that and of course you publish a fictitious CPI which today shows that the uh, price level has only risen one, two or three percent. Let's say that Ron Paul is elected, uh, is nominated by the Republicans and beats Barack Obama uh, in November 2012 and calls you up and says, Lou, I want you to be my Secretary of the Treasury. What will you do the first month in office to bring America back to a sound dollar? Well, I'm sure Representative Paul, uh, uh, and th if that were so, President Paul would have lots of outstanding men and women to choose from. But he picked you. Okay. I would recommend to the President that he issue several executive orders as promptly as possible, which means certainly in the first six months. One, to uh, overturn and uh, uh, repudiate Nixon's uh, executive order uh, taking America arbitrarily off uh, the gold link, a gold backed right. dollar. Uh, after repudiating that issue, two positive uh, executive orders. One, an executive order defining gold as money and therefore removing all taxes uh, at all jurisdictions from gold so it could be used as so money. So it would just actually like paper money. circulate as money. It would circulate, uh, it would be an optional choice to use right. money because, of course, you would have Federal Reserve notes and the deban demand deposits against which you write checks every day. Right. So you would have a parallel system uh, uh, where gold is no longer taxed the way it is now in any uh, government jurisdiction, local or federal. And people could then, and then the second uh, executive order would, would declare that gold could be used as money at the option of the holder. Okay, last question before we let you go. Do you think we could ever have private currency, competition in currency, currency where the government doesn't control the tap all the time? Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, a free monetary order means the monetary system, money, free from government intervention. Right. Which is where I think uh, Representative Kucinich has it wrong. I mean, as a progressive, he wants the government to control the treasury and the treasury to control the money and to print the money and give it to the government to, to create the same inflation. He's a very intelligent, uh, uh, well-disposed man, but he's got it all wrong. What we need is the government out 
of the money business. Do we need to amend the Constitution? Because Dennis Kucinich's argument is that the Constitution says the Congress shall coin money. He's right. It does say that. Well, we don't have to change the Constitution. We have to uphold the Constitution. If the Constitution says that uh, Congress has the, uh, has the power to coin money. To coin, it, not prints, to coin. That's right, to coin money. And then it later, in, uh, in the same article, prohibits the states from issuing anything but gold and silver coin as a legal tender. We know the constitutional intent was a gold back dollar or in certain cases a silver back uh, dollar and cash that competes with cash lou it's a pleasure thank you very much thank thanks you, for Jeff. joining us could the dollars